Hi, I'm WTOP Entertainment Editor Jason Fraley, and we're here with the one and only Jessica Chastain, who's joining us to talk about The Zookeeper's Wife, which comes out, um, it'll be this week by the time you guys see this. Jessica, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yes, the film comes out March 31st. Awesome. Now, just in case, I saw it a couple weeks ago, and obviously you know what it's about, but our listeners don't, so tell them this awesome story. You're almost like an Oscar Schindler at a zoo, in a way. Like, <laughs> explain, explain this awesome story. Yeah, this is a true story, um, recently... Uh, um, just kind of discovered, um, based on the best-selling novel, The Zookeeper's Wife, uh, about Antonina and Jan Zabinska, um, who sacrificed their safety, the safety of their children, everything that they held dear to save the lives of hundreds of people in World War II. They smuggled people, Jews, out of the ghetto, and Antonina um, would hide them um, at the zoo. And not only did she save their lives, but she bolstered spirits and fostered hope. And it really is a story about the goodness in humankind. Wow. And this is in Warsaw, Poland in like 19, what is it, 45 It starts um, thirty nine, so okay. it goes throughout the war. Oh, throughout the whole war. Okay, wow. I mean, if that's not hooked you already, I mean, it's crazy when you're watching the movie and then it gets to the end <laughs> and you find, you know, that you see the picture of the real life people and find it's a true story. It's, it'll give you goosebumps just knowing that for sure. Um, when did you hear about it? Did you read the book or did you? Well, they sent me the script, okay. and that was the first time I started to get to know their story. And I googled them, and then um, I read the book, which was so so illuminating for me. And then I went to Warsaw and met with Teresa, Antonina's daughter, who's still alive. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, wow. What insights did you get from her? Did she, you know, did you look at old photo albums or, you know, yeah. what, what is that whole situation like? She showed me a lot of pictures and we were at the zoo because the Warsaw Zoo is still standing. It wasn't destroyed in World War II. One of the few things in Warsaw that wasn't destroyed. The house and the villa is still there that they lived in. Um, the basement where they hid everyone in the tunnels are still there. And she, I just asked her questions about her mom. She, one thing that was really surprised me, she told me her whole life she never saw her mother in a pair of pants. Really? Yeah, she was taking care of all these animals, like in these very feminine dresses. and Very and different it, time. Very different time. <laughs> <laughs> but so you got, did you get like an actual tour? You, see the, you saw the tunnels and everything? Oh, yeah. And yeah, you could still go to the villa and see all of that. Oh, my gosh. Is it like the movie where there's, there's drawings um, on the walls? There's no drawings no? Right. on the wall. <laughs> is that creative license? or That, is, oh, that okay, was okay. Uh, Nikki, Nikki Carr, director, her visual way of telling the story. And Tanina, um, while she was hiding people, created an atmosphere of love and music and art. Yeah. And so that was Nikki's way of demonstrating that. Now, are you, are you a big animal lover yourself? I'm obsessed with animals. So I the like beginning of the movie. more than people. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? Well, they are much easier. They're more reliable. They're just, they're more authentic. They don't lie to you. They don't manipulate. They're so pure in their love and in their emotions, and I wish people were a little bit more like that. Yeah, it is a little hard to watch. In the early scenes, it's worth watching for the rest of it, but watching the, the animals, you know, when the, when the bombs start dropping at first, it's, it's heartbreaking. I don't know mm -hmm. how you don't just choke up on set, but no animals were harmed in the making of this. Definitely not. <laughs> um, sort of relate how your character, you know, moves from that and how caretaking for all these animals almost primes her perfectly to, to take on her new, let's say, larger role of, uh, of helping, you know, hide all these refugees. Well, Antonina believed all living creatures were valuable and miracles. So um, she understood the healing power of animals. I mean, I don't know if you have... Do you have any animals at your house? I used to have a dog, yeah. Yeah? Well, for me, like my dog, and I'm sure you probably noticed this yeah. too, if you're feeling sad, your dog is the first one there. <laughs> it senses it, and it like wants to be around you and make you feel better. Um, and, and animals do. They're very pure. They There's this unspoken language and they can just feel your feelings um so yeah she was able to use her gift with animals and she got through animals she got to learn more about the human animals yeah <laughs> that's a good word for us yeah uh, <laughs> um talk about working with Daniel Brühl some of those scenes so if you guys haven't seen it yet he plays sort of the antagonist on the side of the third Reich who um you you sort of let him go along letting him think that you're working with him um so that you can hide um these Jews right under his nose in in the zoo um so um talk about acting those scenes where it must be such a complex range of emotions because there he is making unwanted advances to you but you have to not show that as much you show it to the audience but not to him so it's you know, describe working those scenes out. Well, he's a brilliant a actor, Daniel Brühl, and um, 
it's tough because, you know, Antonina is very pure herself. She doesn't lie and she doesn't manipulate. Right. So, and she also sees the good in everyone. She sees the good in his character. And at the end, she even says, I know you. You are not like this. Right. This is some uniform or some wave of power, but this is not who you are. Uh, and in, the, in most of the scenes with Heck, I think she's just trying to use honesty um, to help her cause without blatantly lying to him. She's not trying to seduce him. She's not being this femme fatale, um, right, you know, right. to make him fall in love with her. Um, and there is one embrace. The first time it gets a little sketchy is um, she embraces him, but in doing so, she's trying to cover his ears. Yes. <laughs> and we won't explain why, but it's it's a specific moment where she's like, oh, I have to do this to, to save someone else. It's, yeah. it's really great. Talk about working with the director, with Nikki. Nikki Caro is a fantastic director. Um, she, I don't know if you're familiar with this movie. She made Whale Ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful film. She's yeah. very earthy. A couple years ago, right? Yeah. 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 So she's in, incredible. Um, really spiritual, earthy, strong, like super sexy. Like she'd be on set with her yeah. all black outfits mm -hmm. and sunglasses and like really a, an incredible kick-ass lady. And a couple of really good visual moments for her in this. It's, I, I think of the scene where you walk out and there's like the ashes falling everywhere, which mm -hmm. I remember. And the, is it snowing? Or, and I mean, I thought of I thought of Schindler. Remember that scene in Spielberg mm -hmm. where the ashes are falling down too and they think it's snowing. But she, a, a nice visual director for her. There's yeah. a couple of really nice moments like that. In and one of my favorite moments in the, the film in speak, goes along with the theme of what does it mean to be in a cage? Because the Warsaw Ghetto is a cage. Right. And there's a, a scene where some people outside of the ghetto are on a date or whatever and they snap a selfie outside with the with the people suffering behind them, behind the bars. And that, to me, was very, uh, a, a strong visual. Because also, I went to Auschwitz um, in preparation for this film, and I felt so kind of disturbed by all this selfie snapping. and oh, that, that That's that just mind-blowing. That yeah. Our culture is now, with, with these devices, like, and to think what actually went there. And yeah, there we are, just taking a selfie with it. Exactly. Things are becoming tourist attractions instead of actually really understanding, where am I right now? What happened? It wasn't that long ago. It really isn't. And, you, if and you, is it, speaking to that point that it's not that long ago, what's the importance then of making a movie like, what was it, Rachel Weisz, in, in denial, or, or this? You know, why is it important to keep telling these stories? And remember that... Let's not let this happen again. We're right down the street from the Holocaust Museum. Right exactly. Here. Well, it's important because you learn from history. That's how you, you know, even as our individuals, we learn from our individual mm -hmm. history. It's how we avoid making the same mistake over and over again. So even if you weren't alive in the past, it's important to learn what society did, what your country was involved in. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and Frank's family was denied a visa to the United States twice. It's required reading um, in schools. For me, I, I was required to read Anne Frank's diary, and I was so happy to read her journal, but I didn't learn, and the teacher didn't say that she was denied entry into my country. And this little girl who was searching for safety um, from violence, we didn't protect her. That's heartbreaking when you find that out. Heartbreaking. Ugh. And we need to know that. Children need to learn that when they're reading this book. Because we're all Americans, and it's we're responsible now for her life, mm -hmm. um, and for for her death. Uh, so it's important to learn how we behaved in history, and how we can, how we're behaving today, and how, um, where we're heading in the future. Well, I love that you're not afraid to shy away from these roles that you know they they can be. Tough to talk about. It'd be nice if we come near and we're just laughing. At it. And she can do that too. But but there, you take on heavier roles. Like and, and your previous one, Miss um, Sloan, we talked to you, um, took on you know gun rights and and and, and trying to get through a gun control bill. Um, congrats on the the Golden Globe nomination for that, right? Thank you yeah. very much. What was that whole experience like? That must have been crazy. It was so cool. I love going to the Golden Globes. There's there. It's a really fun party. Everyone's <laughs> there, like hanging out, laughing. I got to sit next to my girl Octavia Spencer. So fun. You know, we work together on the help, mm -hmm. and whenever we see each other, we're always, you know, usually people don't sit us next to each other because we end up talking the whole time. But <laughs> we can't shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> but we were really happy. Speaking of, it's funny you mentioned that. So you and Octavia are, are sitting there. So she won for the help, obviously. But then you're sitting there watching this year's Oscars, and Viola, Viola wins, and, and Emma. Emma. 
it's like the just being in the movie in, in the help with you wins them Oscars. What, I mean, what, <laughs> I don't know if I have anything to do with that. Yeah. Um, but members of the movie in general, I mean, to be with them before they all became all yeah, these big. Yeah, it's winners. really exciting. I mean, we were That's all so make cool. we all made that movie. We were all unknowns, you yeah. know. I mean, Bryce was a a big actress because yeah. she had done those Marvel films. I sure. think like Spider Man and. And she, you know, The Village and all those incredible performances. And Emma had done Easy A. But she was still just kind of breaking out. Yeah. Um, and we were, like, Octavia, Viola, myself, I, you know, um, we were all really excited to be yeah. part of that film. I mean, you could say that about a lot of your movies. But, you know, uh, you know, even Zero Dark Thirty, you had Joel Edgerton and Chris Pratt and all those guys. And, and, and Jason Clark, all those guys. Yeah. And you, I mean, all, they're all, you're all huge, huge stars now. Um, they're giving me the, the signal, so we have to wrap up soon. But... <laughs> I wanted to see if we could end similar to we did last time. Okay. Last time we did a rapid fire and I threw out the names of your of your films and you had hilarious answers for me. So I was did one I? Oh, you did. You it, well, I mean the it was like on it was just like one yeah, one word answers. But I wanted to see if I said it this time, almost like a newlywed game off of yourself. See if you say the same answer as last time. I don't know why. <laughs> because I probably had so much energy last time and I've been this is the end of a long press tour, so You were drinking chamomile tea, so you were a little more I don't know if you're oh. caffeinated or not, though, so... Okay, I don't know. we'll see. All right, the help. I'm just supposed to say one word. One or a phrase. Love. You said drinking moonshine in Mississippi. Funny how that changes. <laughs> Tree of life. Um, butterfly. Playing tag with three boys. Kind of close. Zero Dark Thirty. Badass. Kicking ass. See, she's <laughs> consistent. Eleanor Rigby. Um, perspective. Super depressed in New York. <laughs> Interstellar. Um, Murph saves the world. Saving the world one equation at a time. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Most violent year. Um, I don't know. The female godfather. Whoa, that's good. Emasculating Oscar Isaac every day. <laughs> uh, the Martian. Uh, the Martian. Um, saving Matt Damon. Yeah, if it wasn't for me, Matt Damon would still be on Mars. Everybody <laughs> saving Matt. Two more. Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Insect murderer. You said, don't worry, dear. Drink your tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I survived. Uh, see, you did that before, uh, what was it, Get Out. You, know, you, were, you were doing the poisonous oh, tea yeah. before. And then Miss Sloan. Oh, Miss Sloan. Um... Let's see, Miss Sloan, <laughs> probably, maybe I said, um, Miss Smith goes to Washington. That's good, changing the world one pantsuit at a time, no? pretty good. Oh, and then let's close it, Zookeeper's Wife, full circle. Zookeeper's Wife, um... <laughs> She's so good at this. Um, all, like, um, the, the, okay, what can you say? The interspecies love story. Wow, that's heavy. That's a perfect place to leave it. Thanks so much, Jessica. Again, Thank it comes you. out March 31st, I believe. Yeah. Zookeeper's Wife, Jessica Chastain, Daniel Brule, go see it. It's a piece of history that we should all know about, that we don't know about. So thank you so much for making it. Thank you. Thanks.